few information. I have few information for the audiences and the participant. All the documents and uh, presentation will be uploaded on RSM Lifelong Learning Hub website in the next week or two from now. So uh, you can upload all the presentations from there. And uh, don't forget that uh, before you leave the conference room today, please hand in the evaluation form of the 20th uh, conference. And tomorrow we have another evaluation form. So don't forget to hand in because we need to know how effective the conference is. Next session will be the presentation from Professor Milan Poo, Masaryk University, Brno, Czech Republic, on learning through different phases of Czech school head career. Good afternoon. <coughs> Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I also would like to say first that uh, it's a great privilege for me to <coughs> take part at this conference and also to have a chance to present a piece of research uh, in which I was inv involved together with my colleagues. I would especially like to thank our Thai <coughs> hosts for very warm welcome and for uh, the whole work they did for us. I feel very well over here. <coughs> I'm going to talk, uh, as it was already announced, about uh, learning through different stages of uh, professional careers of Czech school head teachers. <coughs> this is the piece of research that uh, we were busy with uh, colleagues of mine last two years and I will say more about the research itself uh, a little bit later. First of all, <coughs> let me say that uh, I'm going to focus uh, on learning as a part of professional career, but uh, also in link with what could be called life path. I'm, also, I'm going to focus on learning of head teachers and on professional careers and in some extent on life paths of uh, those head teachers. I'm going to focus on basic school head teachers in the Czech Republic, that means those who are running or leading the schools for the kids uh, 6 to 15 years of age. And um, I'm going also to focus on uh, specific forms of learning those people have undergone through different stages of their professional careers. Uh, I will be <coughs> talking about findings that are a result of our empirical res research. Uh, so uh, this is what we have found out uh, and uh, this is our interpretations of what we have found out. I want to say that um, the learning as a part of professional and in some way also uh, life, career and path, uh, I would like to stress uh, mainly uh, with regard to unity of uh, life and work stories that we were uh, listening to and we were analyzing, uh, with uh, emphasis on learning processes in for and through uh, the workplace, the school in our case, and uh, with a stress on perception of interlinks among uh, what's normally called uh, formal, uh, non-formal and informal learning. In a number of ways, I assume, I can link it to uh, a number of things colleagues who talked before me emphasized. Let me say a few words about uh, our research. <clears throat> uh, the title of the research uh, is uh, Head Teachers of Czech Schools and Their Life and Professional Careers. And uh, it was and it is still uh, conducted by the team which I'm leading, the team of four colleagues. Uh, one of them you might know, Petr Novotny is also a member of uh, network number two. Uh, 
workplace learning. Oh, it's better, yeah? No. <laughs> Thank you. Workplace learning, this is the book. Lynn is just waving uh, at me with. The research was supported by the main uh, sponsoring, research sponsoring body in the Czech Republic, Czech Science Foundation. And we wanted uh, by that research to contribute uh, to the knowledge of theory and practice of head teachers' work in the context of development of their life and professional careers. Maybe uh, at this point, uh, uh, it would be good to say a few words why we have uh, chosen the head teachers. Uh, yet before that, let me a little bit introduce in brief uh, our research focus for the uh, last uh, 15 or so years. It is a part of the explanation. Uh, together with my team, we are interested uh, mainly on public uh, organizations and mainly on educational, uh, educational uh, entities. Uh, most of the time we are focusing on schools and we are trying to look at them at the same time as uh, institutions. Uh, that means as entities that are obliged to sort of meet the sort of framework, uh, legal framework, economic, political, culture, religious, etc., etc., etc. At the same time, we are looking at the schools as uh, specific organizations, that means as entities that have a chance to fulfill that framework in a very specific ways, and uh, as organizations that in number of very key factors differ from, uh, let's say, uh, usual type of organizations. And at the same time, we are trying to look at the schools as, as communities, that means uh, places for people's meetings, places for uh, caring, places of respect, support, trust, etc., etc. Those, uh, those three levels, uh, those three dancing on, uh, those three uh, needs or, or the musts, obligations to dance on the same, on, on, the, on the free weddings at the same time. We are trying to look at, uh, and we are trying to look how schools are dealing on the with it on the level of leadership, management, and governance. Uh, coming out of that, uh, we have been focused on school governance systems. We have been researching uh, school family relations. We have been researching collegial and supportive and or non-supportive relations of people, professionals within the schools. We have been focused on styles of leadership. We have been researching uh, school culture. We have been uh, researching the issue of uh, democracy at schools, and also uh, lately, and this is this piece, piece of research, we have been focused on the way, <clears throat> how is the professional and also life um, course of those who, who have a uh, main deal of responsibility on their shoulders, how it is going on, in what waves, uh, under what circumstances, in what interlinks, etc. Maybe a uh, few words about why we have picked up the school heads. Uh, and this could be justified uh, mainly with the main shift which happened uh, uh, as for the schools in our society within the last almost 20 years. While at the very end of 80s, early, still early 90s, schools were perceived as entities that are supposed to uh, execute the ready-made stuff, the stuff that has been developed uh, outside. And the school leaders, in particular head teachers, were supposed to be the ones who should make care, uh, should uh, make sure this is happening. Uh, nowadays, within actually very few years, we have moved to the situation in which schools are being viewed as uh, relatively autonomous institutions. Uh, they are expected to develop from within. Uh, they are expected to be anchored in various, uh, uh, various relations on the local, but not only on the, on the local level. And the school leaders, mainly school head, 
is supposed to be the main driving force for all of that. Yeah. In other words, the uh, situation in Czech education, school education, and the situation and expectations and uh, duties and responsibility of the school heads have changed dramatically. And uh, we can say that uh, uh, in, with a certain amount of simplification, school heads are uh, sort of perceived to be, uh, so as I said already, main uh, key, ac or key actor within the whole transformation process. This is, uh, uh, of course, a new situation which is bringing very much uh, new elements, we believe, into a professional careers and development, and which may also have something to do in a new social and political uh, climate, uh, perhaps also with some elements of their life path and uh, interrelations between those two. So uh, uh, here you can see some, uh, uh, some legal preconditions uh, who can become a teacher. Uh, just one uh, thing that comes out of it, it must be the educator, the, the person who passes teacher training. It cannot be the uh, person from other sector without prior uh, education training. So we are always talking about people who have chosen the education career. Let me say a few words about research methodology we have used. Uh, uh, we have chosen qualitative, uh, qualitative design, qualitative approach, and biographical and narrative design uh, that is often being called life history. And we have been combined uh, several uh, data collection methods. Uh, main of them uh, was were biographical interviews with the head teachers. We had nine head teachers with whom we went uh, through in-depth interviews, repeated interviews, trying to get most of it. We also uh, used uh, the method called focus group with another set of basic school head teachers. We uh, also uh, conducted interviews with those who uh, in a long run collaborated or collaborate with our respondents, the uh, deputies, teachers uh, uh, within the school, etc., so that they could sort of complement the data we have been getting from our main respondents. And we have also used some participative observations and some document analysis. Um, we have chosen our small sample, but uh, in qualitative uh, research, it is often uh, the sample is not dramatically big. We have chosen with the uh, intention to get certain balance. Uh, so we have uh, had more or less uh, equal proportion of men and women, more or less equal proportion of uh, those uh, who have already a long lasting working experience or working experience at least uh, in the job, I mean in the head teacher's job, at least seven years. We have been trying to pick uh, people from uh, schools that are considered in Czech uh, context uh, small schools, not small size schools, but uh, sort of completed schools, but still of a small scale, about 200 uh, pupils. We have also tried to pick up uh, head teachers from medium size schools, which is in our case about five to 600 uh, pupils. And we have also tried to invite um, proportionally head teachers from larger schools, which is in our case uh, about 1,000, maximum 1,500, it is really maximum in our conditions. We usually have small schools. And we have also tried to pick up uh, people from schools that have a varying uh, reputation. We looked at the, uh, at the school inspection reports and also we uh, trying to figure out from other sources whether, it, whether the school is believed to be good or let's say average or whether it's uh, understand to be really excellent school. This way in, uh, in the period 2007-2009 we have interviewed, uh, as I said already, nine uh, head teachers and uh, we have also uh, sort of realized the other methods I mentioned. The focus group was done this year 
as I also said already. Now, um, let me say a few words about main stages as they came out of uh, our uh, data analysis. I should say, uh, first of all, that we are well aware of number of research done in the UK, also in uh, other English-speaking uh, countries mainly, but also in Germany and, and, and Switzerland and uh, some other contexts, Denmark, uh, uh, f uh, that were focused on a similar topic. This topic uh, uh, is uh, new uh, in Czech environment. Yeah. Uh, we are also aware of classifications that uh, different researchers uh, sort of created on the basis of their data. Uh, and uh, I have to say, we uh, recognize them, uh, respect them, yet we didn't stick to any of them, trying to develop own or own, our own classification that seemed to be most appropriate according to our data. On the base, uh, or this way, we have, uh, although there are similarities, of course. This way, we have arrived to free or maybe uh, one plus three uh, uh, sort of broad stages, which can be, the three of them at least, uh, uh, differentiated or structured internally further in more detailed way. At this moment here, I will not do it. I will just say a few words about characteristics of uh, all of these uh, stages and about uh, learning aspects that we have identified in there and perhaps about some are uh, related issues. So the uh, uh, stage zero, as we could also call it, <coughs> that means the stage uh, before, uh, before uh, entering the uh, job of head teacher, is the stage that we have found uh, has enormous importance uh, since this is the pathway towards the head teacher's function. And in that, we have uh, identified uh, repeatedly uh, several uh, typical decisive, typically decisive moments that uh, usually uh, play an important role. First of all, quite obviously, is the very choice of the uh, profession or of the study leading towards the profession. A uh, number of our participants said, well, the key, key, key moment, decisive moment for us was that I went for teaching, to study teaching. I always wanted to do that. Can you see the, uh, the, saying, the, the things of participants, uh, at least in part? So they always wanted, some of them always wanted to work with kids, and this was natural way of the uh, sort of uh, choice at the moment of choice. Some others were, uh, seemed, to, uh, seemed to be more interested in subject, let's say mathematics or something, but didn't feel up to uh, studying uh, it uh, as a, uh, mathematics itself, so went for the way combining uh, their interest in subject and teaching something they also found acceptable. So uh, actually this was one of the elements uh, which could be called care of children and also safe and perhaps in some way pragmatic, pragmatic choice. Another element which uh, was typical for most of our respondents and was taking place still before the entering the job was uh, the uh, very uh, moment when they were approached uh, by somebody to apply for the job. Interest interestingly enough, uh, practically almost all of our respondents were claiming that it was someone else who uh, caused that uh, they applied for the job and became the head teachers. Uh, it looked almost as if they were sort of apologizing. I didn't want to go for it. Teaching is the one, uh, is the job we, were supposed, we are supposed to do, not the head teaching. Yeah. And uh, uh, yet, yet uh, analyzing the, the interviews, we arrived to the conclusion that this is only part of the truth. Another part is that uh, all of our respondents uh, were uh, sort of going for it as well, from, from within. Uh, so it was kind of combination of external uh, pressure in some cases, or being approached, being assured by somebody, do it, uh, go for it, apply for it, um, you'll succeed. 
you are up to, and the internal strife, which they tend to somehow not really, uh, not really uh, recognize or express. In that stage, uh, we could say, uh, we could say uh, subjectively, uh, part our respondents are claiming they didn't know much about it. They, they practically didn't do anything about head teaching, uh, head teaching work. They often uh, were stating that their imagination, their idea was very naive, uh, sort of coming out of teacher's perspective, not really uh, based on uh, the, the view from within, or even uh, some kind of formal preparation for the job. Yeah. Uh, I have to say that uh, most of our respondents became head teachers during the 90s or early uh, in this decade. And uh, this is still the time when the formal preparation of head teachers for the job before or prior entering the job was far not always the case. It was actually the, uh, the, the, the minimum of those who got formal preparation and got the job afterwards. Yeah. So they were sort of widely, more or less, uh, jumping into the water of head teacher's work. Um, at the same time, uh, they showed in the expressions that uh, once they accepted the challenge, they were positively uh, open to, uh, to the need to learn new things. To, uh, they recognized they will have to, new, uh, uh, to learn new things, and they, 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 they wanted to go for it. So uh, there was a positive sort of uh, attitude at the very beginning, just before entering the job. The first phase uh, we called uh, broadly, bro broadly defined phase the beginner. Usually it concerned uh, first two years in the job. Usually uh, there are different differences in uh, particular cases. Um, so uh, this is the phase uh, that could, uh, in which could be found some outer uh, stimuli or perhaps barriers, depends for learning. One of them was, as I said already, a uh, lack of formal preparation for vast majority of our head teachers. Another moment, uh, which uh, I should say, was the, uh, was the fact of uh, a phenomenon of being a false beginner. At, a, at, one, at one side, they all, were, they, all, they all were perceiving themselves as the very beginners in the job, but uh, very often they were claiming at the same time that uh, the job required from the day number one to do it in full, uh, not sort of beginner's regime, not, so, not, so, not sort of uh, somebody uh, sort of looking after you and helping you to, uh, to induct, but uh, so simply working 100% from the day number one. So the beginnership was kind of illusion in a way for some of them. Many of them also mentioned the uh, moment or the element of existing culture in which they were stepping in. Uh, frankly speaking, or interestingly enough, uh, in times when leadership succession is the big issue in a number of, uh, uh, number of uh, uh, sectors, I would say, uh, and also in research. Uh, in our case, uh, it was a really minimum of uh, respondents who were positive about the uh, former heads, uh, about those who were in the job before. Very often, the uh, expressions like uh, ground zero or building out of the scratch uh, were, were used by those who entered newly the job and inherited uh, something they had to face and deal with. I'm not sure if it's really supportive for the idea of leadership, su leadership succession, uh, but it's a very complex question, of course. Uh, the very important element in this beginning phase seems to be uh, the fact that uh, practically all of our new heads, in those time new heads, beginners, had very good teacher's reputation, uh, reputation X -T, as, uh, uh, in times they were teachers. Yeah. So in that period, it seemed, they often built their authority on the teacher's authority, yeah? on the 
pedagogical master uh, mastering on, on the fact that they could say to teachers, well, you know, I am, I am able to do that uh, as you or as I'm requesting uh, from you. Yeah? And this was the main source of respect, uh, it seemed, uh, from the others uh, towards the beginners at the very beginning stage of the uh, of the of the of the uh, headship. Uh, also, uh, it should be said that at the beginning stage, uh, the <coughs> uh, our respondents accepted a career change uh, quite uh, quite naturally, and they uh, seemed to be uh, typical with their optimism, sometimes even na naivety. Maybe the uh, the, uh, the the sentence or two three, three sentences from head teacher six. Uh, explained very, uh, very clearly. Uh, when I went for it, uh, uh, quotation, I mean, uh, being head, you know, I had a kind of idea everyone has who can see uh, head teaching from the outside, you know. My idea was there will be law and order in the school and the kids will immediately have excellent knowledge. Very nice, but a uh, little naive idea, as the head teacher admitted later quite clearly as well. Uh, still, as for the beginner's attitude to learning, uh, we have identified that uh, they were trying to use uh, both formal and non-formal opportunities. Uh, there were some elements of it, as I uh, indicated earlier. Maybe stronger than that, uh, and they were trying to uh, get together with the heads who also in those periods uh, got into the job new, jobs newly. Uh, this period was very typical, the whole 90s and early uh, years of this decade were very typical with a sort of bottom up building up head teachers networks in which people were trying to uh, learn from the other, to help each other, to share experience, to support each other. Also quite often uh, there was uh, uh, an evident tendency of head teachers to take over existing solutions, simply to uh, make use of the uh, model head teacher whom uh, they met somewhere and got impressed. And also often we have seen uh, and we have heard about uh, the, what could we identify as intuitive approaches to the role, simply learning new things uh, by doing uh, despite two errors. In any way, uh, we could, uh, generally speaking, that as for the uh, learning, uh, uh, there, there is a large, uh, large uh, proportion of diversity, or level of diversity. Yeah. Um, one of the very important elements uh, that was kind of deciding whether things go well further on, or whether it's going to be troublesome, uh, was the, f the, the, the moment of dealing with challenging situation in, the, in that period. Yeah. Many of them mentioned a very concrete challenging situation in which they fall into and had to deal with it somehow. And those who uh, succeeded, most of them succeeded according to their words, and uh, claimed that this was kind of a very firm basis for further for further uh, development of their work in the job. Yeah. In one case, it was, it was the fight for the school flat, which was kind of inherited from the former head teacher. In another case, it was uh, facing the crowd of uh, parents who were having very different idea about school responsibility, etc., etc. So self-perception self and self-evaluation of uh, head teachers' uh, uh, success in that particular moment was very important moment, uh, which was also, once getting repeated, kind of uh, signalizing uh, gateway to the next stage. The next stage uh, is the one of in intermediate. Uh, we could say performing stage, uh, uh, referring to Balbin on the RS, you know, team, teamwork building, perhaps. This is the stage uh, uh, where people are calming down a little bit, sobering up from the initial naivety or optimism, over-optimism perhaps, yeah. Uh, we, can, we could see that they were identifying with the school and with its problems, 
and they fall fully, uh, up, they got fully absorbed with that. Yeah. Some of them also indicated a certain kind of loneliness and um, sometimes successful, sometimes not very successful uh, strive uh, to overcome it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> again, in this intermediate, intermediate uh, uh, stage, we could ident identify um, some uh, sources of uh, uh, knowledge, let's say. Main sources seem to be the main practice. They indicated uh, quite a disappointment uh, from of existing former programs of uh, head teachers training, uh, be it state or private. They uh, often uh, were focusing very much on the within the school, trying to learn from their own actions, from actions together with the other people. And also they were very much uh, turning towards the head teachers networks trying to get utmost from those networks. In some cases, uh, they were indicating already in that stage uh, more profound uh, ability or skill to delegate within the school and to work together with the others, which seemed to be life-saving, basically, uh, for them within, within the job. They claimed <coughs> that this was the process to arrive to it. Most of them uh, first wanted simply to keep the responsibility and the activity on their own shoulders, which is, of course, killing. Again, uh, as in the uh, first, this beginnings, beginner's stage, uh, we could have seen uh, the high importance of success again. Yeah? Um, but not the personal success. They do, didn't need to succeed in uh, challenging situations as head teachers anymore that much but they needed the success of their own school, for which they were the leaders. Very great shift towards the school as a whole. Yeah. And again, a repeated uh, experience of this kind of success uh, 